Whoa, whoa, whoa. Welcome back to the 89th episode of, well, not welcome back to the 89th, just welcome back to the Super Mega Cast. It is the 89th episode. I am here with my friend Matthew Watson. What if, wait, wait, wait. What if, what if I told you it wasn't the 89th episode? Oh shit, it's the 90th. It's the 90th episode. Hold on. Pick up that intro again. I gotta restart it. All right, go ahead, buddy. Welcome back. It is the 90th episode of the Super Mega Cast. There we go. Here man. we go. Or the Super Mega Podcast, whatever you want to call it. It's whatever you want it to be. You but just, I mean, it is the Super Mega Cast. You can just call it the that one podcast. Yeah, and it's strange. It, it, it's this weird thing. If you like the podcast, um, you are able to go onto iTunes, search up Super Mega Cast, and it pops up. An even crazier thing is that you can actually rate the podcast and help us out by getting up there in the charts and supporting your boys. You could if you wanted. You know, by uh, four or five stars. We're not. I prefer you five exactly. stars. Yeah, five it, stars is great. But you know, if if you feel like we we're faltering in any way, which we're not, you you can you can lie and say four stars. But I mean, I would really prefer if you just yeah, give I five mean, stars. yeah, five stars would be nice. That's what I do to Uber drivers. You know, like I give, I always give Uber drivers five stars, and if I didn't like them, I just don't rate them. If I, I didn't like them, I, it's usually like eh, four stars. I'm always, I always feel bad giving Uber drivers less than five. I'm like, ah, because apparently like three stars is devastating. So I'm just like, well, no. also think of it because like it's our responsibility as the passengers to help other passengers out. Like if you feel like your driver is unfit or unsafe in his travels, that's then, true. Then I think it's very important to rate that driver poorly. You know what, Ryan? That's, that's true. I'm going to start giving all my drivers one star that Be I don't like. Because it's just like, well, I mean. If if they're legitimately putting you in danger, like if they almost get into a wreck, I'd probably give them a bad s score. I've like never, if, I've never rated one star though on Uber. I don't think I have ever done that. I uh, I I if I, the, if, the, if it's their fault, not like if they accidentally just someone crashes. Someone into pulls them. in front of them. It's like oh, no, but like if they've star. run a red light and then almost crash into someone, and they're obviously throughout the course of like you know allow them little tiny mistakes because we all make them. But at the same time, recognize that would would you want to this person to drive you again? I'm going to just start bringing a bullwhip in the back of my Ubers and then like just throughout the ride, just whoosh, like if he messes up, just <laughs> crack him over the back with the whip. Like, come on, driver. Uh, I've never been picked up in a convertible Uber. I haven't either. Like, and technically a convertible ca can be an Uber. Can it? Yeah. It's just four, four doors, to? I think, is the requirement. Okay. Just four doors. Okay. I mean, I got picked up in a pickup truck once. Um, oh, yeah, Uber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was weird. I was like, huh. It was like a very lifted pickup truck and he pulled up and i was like oh this is my uber i got in soon uber is just gonna be like you want to be picked up in what make and model of car what color of car because everyone's gonna be renting or leasing something yeah have you ever ridden the convertible no uh, once 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 it's fun once. it's fun it is my, i mean my it's a lot of wind it is you don't really enjoy the music that much because no, or conversation yeah or conversation it's just wind it's just wind so actually I have to say, it is nice because you rarely get that that kind of silence when you're in a group, and I think it's some sometimes it it works for the best. Yeah, man, I I love uh, I I've, I've, I've ridden in a convertible like twice in my life, and I was like, this is really cool. And then you get out, and your hair is like completely like after you get off of a back. roller coaster. Yeah, and I, recently I went to Six Flags, uh, and six, that was my first time going to Six Flags. Six Flags. Six Flags is awesome. They have a ton of awesome roller coasters. I do have to. They had they had more roller coasters than I could do in one day. Like I, there were still like five or six I hadn't done by the time I left, and I was there all day. Six Flags seems like a park that's in between, like a high quality amusement park, and then Carowinds. Like it's in between those two. Like it always has given me that impression of that type of park. Carowinds is a park in South Carolina. For those who don't know, yeah, Six Flags is very high quality. It's got a ton of great rides. Okay, you ever been to Six Flags? I've been there once. It just uh. Like, you know parks that, like, maintain 100% that are, like, super corporate, like, Disney World yeah. and shit like that? It's, like, that's the high end. Then you have Carowinds at the very kind of lowish end, not the very low. And then Six Flags is in the center where it's, like, it's not trying to really be this Disney type of thing. It's just, like, come have fun at this park. And I feel like Six Flags is a good middle ground. Like, it's the perfect kind of park. Because Disney World, I get bored a lot sometimes. I'm like, oh, I, I would like, I would write, I would like to have a thrill ride. That's not like, I mean, Mission to Mars is fun, and they have a bunch of stuff like that. That's fun, but I, I want to go on some nice coasters. They yeah, don't have any of that. D Disney only has like a couple of coasters. And Space like, Mountain. Six Flags is just straight up coasters. Yeah, intense ones too. There was one where I, I got off and I was like, whoa, that one was like almost too much. 
not because it made me feel sick, but because it like jerks you around so much. And like there, there was one where it goes backwards and like it, it does this kind of like you get so much pressure from this loop that like your head starts to go kind of numb and your eyes start to like you lose your vision for a second. And I was like, whoa. Did you ever do the Incredible Hulk ride at or, or Universal Orlando? No, I heard I heard that one's crazy. Though. Launches you. It's so fun. Yeah. Uh, the 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 most intense amusement park I've ever been to though was that one in uh, the base of Mount Fuji, Fuji yeah. Q. Woo! If anyone is traveling to Japan, uh, I recommend going to Fuji Q. You get to see a beautiful view, uh, view of Mount Fuji and ride some insane roller coasters that break a lot of world records. How far is that gonna be away from where we're gonna be? Um, it's like an hour bus ride or so. Hmm. We're going to Japan. Would it be worth it to go check out the amusement park? Or yeah, no? I think we already are. Okay. Of course, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. We're going to uh, we're going to Japan soon. I don't know when uh, exactly. Going with uh, Aaron and Susie, our good friends. Yes, it's gonna be a fun little time. I'm gonna have a lot of sushi and a lot of ramen, and uh, a lot of awkward experiences. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, I, I'm gonna feel very alone. Why are you gonna feel alone? Because I'm. It's like I'm in a place in a different culture that I'm not accustomed to. I'm sure that's like how a lot of people feel when they go to a new place. They like it's fun, but they also like like I'm going to be with you guys, but also like there's going to be those times where I'm probably going to want to go out and take a walk and listen to music or something like out on the street, like explore and just kind of like have one of those times and be like, wow, it might feel actually really like good because sometimes like seclusion in an area where it's like, oh, I'm not going to be bothered and have a conversation with. Yeah, no, I never felt alone when I'd go out by myself. I always felt very, um feels cool, you know, because you're like, wow, I'm in a completely different place from what I'm used to. Like, and I am so far from what I'm used to. Um, but it's still familiar enough to where you don't feel like out of place or weird. It mm -hmm. still feels very much, uh, feels very different from America, but not different enough to where you would feel uncomfortable. You know, okay. it, it, the way it feels different is, is like, it's more organized and things could, look a little different. Could I find my... My beloved Nigerian prince. Yes, there's plenty of Nigerian princes in Tokyo. Yes. There's a ton of, of Nigerian dudes in Tokyo that will try to pull you into strip clubs. And according to you, they sound like Russians that go, you want to see titties? Well, that's just because I'm really bad at doing accents. <laughs> I can't do a good Nigerian accent. Well, they see some Asian, did they did they expressly say titties or Asian titties? You said, you said titties. 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 You said, you want to see titties? That sounded Russian. Oh boy, do I. I want to see titties. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll meet a nice Nigerian prince. Going around. He's like, are they always just, um, not Nigerian princes, but are those bodyguard people always just in tune with strip clubs or are they like, are they outside regular bars too? Or is it like both? Okay. There's some outside regular bars. Um, Hey, you want to see some drink drinks? <laughs> some drink drinks? Yes, I do. He pulls out a sippy cup. Come here, boy. I like how when you were speaking, like, the accent began before you started his dialogue. You're like, the sippy cup. <laughs> the sippy cup. Um, Come on, the sippy cup. No, they'll, they'll, try to sell, they'll, they'll try to sell you stuff in, some, in places like Harajuku, or they'll try to, like, stop you. And um, I said, one guy tried to stop me to sell me something, and I, and I just said, I said, no, thank you. And he she goes. She said, yes, please, yes, please. He goes, stupid fucking white boy. And Wait, I was really? Like, Ooh. Yeah. You guys got real aggressive with me. I was if he like, said that to me, I'd grab him by his legs, spin him around, and fling him to the mountains. And, he, and then he would fly into the sky and go, Ding! Yep. Like the little, <laughs> that, that would happen. I wish that happened in real life. Like, if you threw someone <laughs> like, or something far enough, he'll go, Ding! Ding! How does Team Rocket survive? Because at that velocity and that height that they go, they're landing. They're being skinned alive and crushed by the ground. Oh, absolutely. Like, on impact. Absolutely. I do not understand how they keep surviving and showing up. Whenever they show up, I'm like, I thought they killed them last time. Dude, they must have they incredible get, health insurance. They get electrocuted all the fucking time. They get drowned sometimes. They're, they're, always, they're always falling from high heights and shit. Like, those guys, I'm serious. Whatever health insurance plan they're on, sign me up. Because they get the best, like, surgery, the best... They they I, how do they do it? I don't know, but they have two. They have they have a cat that talks and a cat that purrs. A nice big old cat that the boss pets, and he's like, "I'm big bad guy, and I look like big bad guy in blue suit with short brown hair, and I look very boring. I'm not a good bad guy." Ha 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 ha. That's what he says. I loved when he said that in the episode. <laughs> yeah. It was really, really good. There's a lot of building. character building for him in that episode. He yeah. Went, ha ha, I might have a family. 
Or I might not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish my cat spoke. Um, and I'm sure if he did, it would just be nothing but vulgarities towards just me. Just fuck you. Fuck you. You, you. Like, to wake you up, you, like, you hear, meow, meow. But, like, in reality, just fuck you. Fuck I you. Like that's what, that's oh, what you're saying. awake now? Fuck you. I, that's probably what he's saying. He's like, hey, let me outside to take a shit. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, everything. Hey, my, my food's a little low, fucker. Like, that's just the vibe I get from my cat. Just like you walk in. Oh, fuck. Okay, hold on. Let me have some fun real quick. Okay, never mind. Fuck you. He, uh, uh last night he woke me up at about 4 a.m. Because he... Was he doing a handstand? No, I, oh. th that, that would be something else. If I woke up and saw my cat doing a handstand, I'd have to take a picture of that real quick. And spinning but, plates on his feet? Dude, that would be fucking <laughs> unreal. Would that, would that make up for everything he's done Everything, yeah. I'd be like, yes! <laughs> and I'd, I'd also be baffled, like, how did he open up my cupboard and get the plates out, first of all? And, <laughs> and second of all, how is he spinning them on his feet like this? Who taught him that? Has he been able to do this since he was a kitten? Like, has he just never shown me? Does he exclusively do it in the middle of the night when I'm asleep because he doesn't want me to know about this talent? He's been practicing when, when, you're, when you're gone for work. That's all he does. That explains why I found a broken dish the other day in my kitchen. <laughs> Spit it out. Oh, God. A whole fucking hamster? That's, that's disgusting. Oh, this one's dead, though. He woke me up last night because he does this thing. He woke you up the night before, too. He, he does, but he, he wakes me up almost every night where he decides at like 3 or 4 a.m. He's like, you know what? I'm going to run laps around this place as fast as I can. So he'll go. Why don't you close your room door? Oh, does he jiggle your door? If I close, if I shut any, if I, if I shut off any room, he will bump up against the door and just meow and meow and scratch on it. And I don't want him to scratch, like leave scratch marks on the door. Yeah. Um. So I got to get, I got to get his, I got his dumb little nails clipped. I got his dumb little head cut off. <sighs> Taking him, I'm going to get him groomed. I just have him cut off his head. Mm. I gotta get him sedatives, because every time I take him to, like, the vet or something, he just... I need to groom Lego, get that fucking fur out, because he's, he's shedding like a beast. It's shedding hard. It's, it's, it's shedding season, it man. It is shedding season. My, my cat's shedding real bad. All of my, my nice couch, he's just get, getting hair all over it, and I'm like, ah, I gotta get my lint roller out and roll the couch. And I can then see the hair on his butt. It's like, this is old fur. You need to, you need to brush me out. He's saying, please, Ryan, brush me, buddy. This, this, this old fur is all itchy. I gotta take him somewhere. He just doesn't like, uh... One thing he does not like is, uh being dried with a machine i can only towel dry him because he is scared of the vacuum oh yeah thing. he's like I, I bathed him once and i remember i tried to i tried to blow dry him uh, i think you're out of town and i gave him a bath and i tried to blow dry him and he like like it, it, it was like opening up the the floodgates at d-day yeah just, and he oh, like yeah. exploded away from me. He like does he was not terrified of the blow dryer. He does not like it. I have to towel dry him and let him. Uh, when I take him some places to get groomed, I'm like yeah, just towel dry and then let him run around and dry off normally. Your voice is shaking really bad. I can't, dude. <laughs> it's, no, it's just from that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not crying thinking of my dog. It's because <laughs> it's because I shake my foot a shit ton, like very violently. <laughs> so, so it's the difference between my voice doing. Wait, it's the difference between my voice doing this kind of like without shaking my leg, and then I'll add my leg in, and then you can kind of hear my my voice start to shake a little bit. It sounds like you're like on the verge of tears, like. <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, or you're like so Lego doesn't like the fucking dryer, or like you, you were like at a police scene. And, and like you have the blanket wrapped around you. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> it just happened so fast. Uh, man, how, how, can you believe there was a time where people got like arrested when someone's like, yeah, I'll describe what he looked like. And the police went, yep, that's got to be him. And they just go and arrest the person. <laughs> yep. It's like, look at this drawing. This looks like you. Man, I would love to see you be a police sketch artist. That would be great. I would love to see that. This someone there had to be at least one case where my sketch helped because it's like, oh, you drew his nose this goofy way, and it actually was that goofy. I'd like to see like you draw this awful portrait of someone, but it turns out that's exactly what they look like, <laughs> like Doodle Bob. Yeah, <laughs> Doodle Bob. I saw a very compelling argument the other day about Doodle Bob from that SpongeBob episode. What, where it was, what like, was the argument? What was the base argument? So basically, SpongeBob, his pants. Or actually, it's a cube because he's like 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Doodle Bob was 2D, so he's the one with the square pants. He's the real SpongeBob. He's the one with the pants. square pants. You know? Oh wow! What a what a show, man! SpongeBob Square Pants. I remember uh, I remember coming home from school, watching a little bit of SpongeBob Square Pants on the television set. It still blows my mind whenever I look at it. And it started in the like '99. I'm like, what? Yeah. I thought it started early 2000s, and I'm like, damn. Makes me feel, old. you know, just like. 
when I, I was looking at this, uh, someone posted on Reddit just a picture of the THX logo. And I'm like, oh, that sucks that that's gone now. And then I had this realization. I'm like, wait, this happens all the time. This is just what getting older is like. It's like stuff from your past either like go like goes out of business, becomes old, like yeah. they stop using it. And I'm like, you know, when I was a kid, you know, it was a big thing. And of course, like it went away one day. And now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, wow, that's something where like if I ever have kids one day, I'm going to be like, yeah, THX had this logo that went born. No one's going to understand it. Mm, kids born like shook the entire theater. Kids born after that date really don't like hear it often that much. Dude, I remember of that, course, that unless just, they see an old movie, I like, guess. Like rattle the earth when that when that thing It was happened. such an like that's what made theater experiences like super cool was like that one moment. It's like boom, it's like, "Oh, wow." Whoa. It's almost like it's almost like the pre uh whatever the video is called, the pre instructional video before you go on a ride. You know those fake little videos they do, um, like before going on a roller coaster, just a thrill ride in some place. We're like, huh, okay, we're about to study Mars. Mars is super interesting, <laughs> but there's an asteroid field around it, so, huh, uh, but there's probably no need to worry about that. But then during the ride, you hit the of asteroid. Of course, you though. hit the asteroids. Yeah. Uh, the THX thing was always like, like to me, it just felt like sitting behind a plane that was starting up, and it's like jets are turning on, and it just like that scene in Jackass Three. When he, when they sit behind like the jet, and he sits in like the 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 chair, and it just completely blows him backwards. <laughs> that looks like fun. It probably hurt like shit though. I I would think it would hurt when they started throwing the shit in the jet, like flying at him at high oh, velocity. Oh, they're throwing like potatoes. Or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jackass is so good. I hope they make a fourth Jackass. Uh, there's I don't think there's ever gonna be like a group like that again. Like we were talking, you know. Uh, in the last podcast, what if Jake and Paul were kind of like the current form of that? And they're just more obnoxious because it's reflecting that side of society, blah, blah, blah. But then I'm then I'm like, no, it's just Jackass was its own thing. No one's going to be able to recreate it or redo it. Yeah, right. So they're, uh, I can't wait for Johnny Knoxville's new movie, Action Point. Is I think that it's called it? Action Point. Action Point. It looks fun. Have you seen the poster? It looks like one of those old school, like, yeah. 80s or 90s posters. I just want to see Johnny Knoxville get hurt more. I've never seen a man love pain more than Johnny Knoxville. He, his, like, his laugh fills me with it's, it's the laugh. Like, he'll get hurt so tremendously bad, and his first reaction go, <laughs> It's like, how? Like, if, I, if, I, if I'm walking down the sidewalk and I trip, I gotta sit down for, like, five minutes and recover from that. But he can, like, fly off, like, a 20-foot balcony and land on his fucking neck and be like, <laughs> You know it's bad when Johnny Knoxville's not making a sound after after something. There's I think that happened in the golf cart one, I think. There's that one, and then the one where they fire the uh, the riot balls. Oh, yeah. Like the riot control. Dude, they were weapon. all shaking for that. Did he, did he actually get the other members to do it? Because I know like a lot of members are like, no, I'm not he fucking got, He got this. Bam to do it, and he got... Um, Bam regretted it 100%. And he got... Who else did he get to do? Oh, the... um, I forgot his name. One of the other dudes, but but they it's, it's one of those like machines that they yeah, use the, the, on like riots... To, to dispel a riot where it just fires rubber balls at like 300 miles per hour. And those, dude, those welts looked painful as hell. I could not imagine being <laughs> shot pain, with one of those things. The pain was just like so intense. Like, I think you just, the moment, I want to see it on their face because you see the realization of pain on their face where it's like, this is going to hurt to, this is more than I expected. They can't speak. They just like drop to the ground. Because it's like their whole body just got ruptured and shaken with pain. I, I wouldn't do that. I, I would do that for like, a million dollars. Fifty thousand oh. dollars. Because it, because it, like, I'll, I'll live. It'll be okay. It's gonna hurt like shit. But then at for the end a, of it, it's for like, a while, yeah, it's like, yeah still fifty, 50 grand. Dollars. Yeah, I definitely do that. I. uh Okay, what, wait. Okay, what's something you wouldn't do for a million dollars? I would not do for a million dollars. Yeah, just one thing. What, what wouldn't you do for a million dollars? What wouldn't I do for a million dollars? I think it'd be easier for me to say what I would do for a million dollars. No, I just want just one thing. One thing that I wouldn't do? Yeah. I wouldn't surf one of those, like, massive waves. Like the 60-foot waves. I would not do that for a million dollars. Okay. Two million? No. Five million dollars. I still wouldn't. It's it's too scary for me, man. How about if they put you in a, in a, in a concrete tomb that they have a GPS tracker on, and they just throw you into the wave, and you just ride it out? Then would you do it for a million dollars? How would I breathe through that? Uh, it, there's a source of oxygen in it. Okay, well, yeah, that's like a guarantee I'm gonna survive. So yeah, I'd do that. But Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, of course. That'd be like a fun roller coaster. You might break some legs. Would you cut off a pinky for a million dollars? I would. 
I th- think so. Pinkies are useless. You don't really need your pinky. No. I feel like, you know, like, if you, you lost your like pinky. You look like a fucking weird alien, though. I, uh, Wah. there's someone out there that doesn't have a pinky, and he's just like, <laughs> wow, sorry. Ryan, thanks. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at it. It looks like a gray alien hand whenever I do that. I had, I had a history teacher that didn't have a pinky Let from the Vietnam War. I'm grabbing mic with my alien hand. I'm grabbing the mic with my, here's the thing. It feels weird. I'm not using my pinky right now. Like, I'm, tr- I'm picking things up without my pinky. It feels weird, but I feel like it's one of those things where after a couple weeks, you just get used to it, and it would be the new norm. And you'd have a million, a million bones in your checking account. I feel like I'm just that hand in a horror movie trailer. Where the last frame is just done, like it grabs the ankle or grabs something or comes up under the door. Why? Why they always gotta grab shit? You know. I don't know. I love how there's a. They might still do this, but horror movies tend to usually like re, like show the last five seconds of the movie in the trailer. They did that with ascent, pretty much Paranormal Activity. They showed the end of the movie in the trailer. They did it with Quarantine, uh, which was a. Uh, I guess a reboot slash remake, American remake I, of Wreck. I remember seeing the trailer where the person's in the, uh, they're in the, um, like, ventilation shaft. I mean, they get pulled backwards. They were in a room. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you ever see Quarantine? I did not. I've never been into horror movies. There's this uh, one, there's this creature, this old man creature that's, like, super skinny. It's like, he's famous for doing these parts because his body's so skinny and off looking. Like, he's been in a bunch of movies. Yeah, Matt Watson. As, yeah, him. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I just horror movies were always put on because my friends were like, ah, let's watch and get scared. And I was never into being scared. So it would be a hell, hellish experience for me. I would hate it. I'd have to use my cross eyed technique 100 percent if I'm watching a movie with a friend. That's scary. Is that where you just crossed your eyes? Huh? Is that where you crossed your eyes? So you weren't. Yeah, because I'm facing away. If they look at my face, it they looks don't, like... They don't want to see you shutting your eyes. Or, like, you don't want them to see you shutting your eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll look at the screen, and I've said this before. This is my number one technique. I'll cross my eyes. See, you're crossing your eyes right now, and I can't even tell. I'm looking at your side profile, and it looks like you're looking directly at the TV screen. Right, but I'm blurring, every, I'm blurring it. I'm hardcore. You, some people can do this that I've talked to. Do you have the ability, without do, squinting or doing anything with your eyes, I can make my vision go completely blurry, like... Well, you just relax your eyes like I'm doing now. Everything's super blurry right now. Yeah, it's like blurry. But I can't describe how to do it. You just unfocus. Yeah, but like how do you, but you can't describe like how to do it, you know? I'm doing something with my eyes. Like I can feel like, it feels like something shifting inside my eye that makes it You're shifting blurry. the focus ring. It's like, <laughs> my little focus ring inside my eye. Oh man. What else would you, what else would you do for a million dollars? Would you, uh. I cut off a pinky toe. Like, I cut off any toe except my big one. Easy. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't feel like you need all your toes. You cut it off yourself, like with scissors? Like arts and crafts scissors? Not. For a million dollars? Would you cut off your pinky with arts and crafts scissors? Well, it depends on how (gasps) easy that would be. No, for a million dollars, would you bite off your own pinky? Like, chew it off? I don't know if your brain will physically let you do that. Of course you can. People take bites out of themselves all the time. They're like crazy when they do that. Yeah. A million dollars will make you go crazy. Oh, let me, let me, let me bite my finger. I don't think I can do that. Like, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, and then you just go, you go to town and you go, you bite down fast and you just get through the pain. And then you're afterwards, you're like, oh, and then you're in a room and then everyone's going, we were just fucking kidding. None of us have a million dollars. Where would we have gotten the fucking money? And then I, and then my pinky is half of it's gone. And there's blood everywhere. It's a story to tell your kids. It is. Then they'll say, how did daddy lose his pinky? And that's the story I tell them. No, I would just say, like, I was actually part of the Yakuza. And I had to cut off my... My my pinky because that's that's what they do when they when when you're when you've been disloyal or you've 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 brought shame you gotta cut off uh, your pinky. Speaking of yakuza, what have you been doing, man? I've actually been communicating with the yakuza, working up a huge deal, a huge drug deal that's no, going down. That's I'm, actually why I'm we're ta- going to Japan. I'm talking about in this reality, not the reality that you built a machine to go to. Oh, um, well, I've been playing Yakuza Zero. Yeah, how you liking it? I fucking love it. It's so much fun. But unfortunately, I uh, I messed up and I didn't. This this just sounds like it makes me sound like a fucking dumbass. No, it doesn't. Everyone's done this before. Every per every person who's played a video game, this has happened to. Poor Matt is going through the trials and tribulations of losing a save file. I lost my save file, and it was it was my own fault. But it was okay. So like, I play like an hour and a half into the game, and I'm like, oh man, I should go to bed now. I'm getting kind of tired. So. I go through the menu of the game and there's no save option. So I'm like, oh, I guess it, I guess it auto saves. And, um, I turn off the PS4 and then 
last night I get all cozy in bed and I bust out the old trusty PS4 controller. I'm like, let's play a little more. Let's continue this great story. And I press continue and it says no save file is found. And I'm just like, oh. How do you save in that game? I don't know. Are there bathroom? Because in, Dead... in the first Dead Rising, it's not like you can press start and save it. You have to go to a save point well, and I save didn't... it. I, I didn't know. Like, did, you, they, did you read all the tutorials? You know what? I, no, I did read all the tutorials. I paid attention very closely. You're making me want to go out and then get Yakuza 6. You should. You play 6, I'll play 0. It looks super fun. Yakuza, hold on. Yakuza 0, how to save. Okay, it's one of the first autocompletes. The game really wanted to make you feel the retro, apparently. In order to ensure your progress won't be lost when you turn off your PS4, you need to head over to the big S icons around your radar. There are plenty scattered. Oh, so you actually have to go to like a save point. Yeah. It never tells you that. Or maybe it does, and I just failed to read that one little blurb of text. You may have failed to read the... Well, I'll figure that out when I'm replaying yeah. it tonight. Hey, you, now you're even better. Maybe you can get some better combos or whatever. Yeah, the, the combat in Yakuza is so much fun. Very theatrical, very over the top. Yeah. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with the God of War combat. Yeah? Do you like yeah. the new God of War? Um, I like the combat. I really do. Um... I guess the new take is fun, and it's interesting for the for the God of War franchise because usually it's just known for being. Um, I would, I would, uh, I guess it's similar to the Gears of War franchise in that it's like over the top, <laughs> that type of shit. That's what God of War is ripping the heads off of gods, and there's still a lot of like violence there and brutality, but it's it it takes this game takes itself a little more seriously. Um, as I said, the combat's really the part that I that I like. There's other like puzzle solving stuff which aren't really puzzles and that I think is just time consuming. But hey, because yeah. uh, I'm just thinking of myself going back and replaying the game, and it's like, oh, so I already know how to do this. Let me just do this. It just seems like something that it doesn't um, help the experience. But overall, the combat feels really good. You, you can throw your axe and then start punching people, and then recall your axe, and as it comes back, it goes through the head of an enemy or something. Dude, that's like insane. it's super like. The combos and stuff seem super fluid and with the more powers you use. Like, it's all about getting combos, but it, I don't think there's any extras in building up the combos. Like, uh, there's no combo counter, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Because there's a lot of games, I think that Yakuza may be one of them, where combos are important. Like, it's like, get a score with your combo. Yeah, you, you have to, like, there there's uh, different combos you can do and like you can grab somebody and if you're if like a meter is high enough you can use like special finisher moves oh, and stuff that's kind of that i guess and it then turns that's into like a theatrical cut scene where you just like smash their head into a wall yeah because uh if uh in god of war you build up each enemy has a health bar and then they have i forget what it's called but they have a bar underneath that if you fill up the bar underneath that before killing them you can do that special move where like you rip them apart or you smash yeah. their face like into dust um, and then there's also this rage mode where if you build up enough of this certain power, you just go balls to the wall, start punching shit. And it's almost like you become a mini boss to the enemies. Oh, that's cool. Um, and you fight just, yeah, there's a mode like that too, where you can be, you become like blue and then just, yeah. but like, it's fun combat. That's, that's what I have to say. I just, uh, for the first time exploring these environments, I'm giving it a pass of course, but I just know it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be like, Oh, let me just grab this. Let me pull the chain. Got to go th do this. Yeah. Um, when I if if I happen to play it a second time or something, I really like Yakuza Zero because it uh takes place in '80s Japan. It's a prequel to the other Yakuza games, and I love '80s Japan. So comes as no surprise that I like this game. I looks love... beautiful. It well, is the Yakuza Six, like nighttime Tokyo. When I was watching gameplay, it mm, looks beautiful, and Yakuza beautiful. Zero looks really just fun. I like I like games that um use color. I I, I don't want combat in games to be kind of just boring. I yeah. guess just like. At least in God of War, there's like different like you have an ice axe, so there's a bunch of powers going around. It looks magical, and then in Yakuza, you, you like you got purple and a bunch of colors you going. Pick up around. a dude by his feet and swing around and throw him over your head. Like combat's got to feel good and it's got to look good in the game. If you get those two down, then it's like yes. Yeah, it, it's so much more satisfying than if you just punch somebody. Yeah. you know, by pressing square. Like if you get a little cutscene where you like pick a dude up over your head and like break his back on your knee and then like throw him into a wall and the camera's like whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's like that's awesome it's all about game feel and then like money is like exploding out of him as you do that like that's awesome <laughs> and then you can pick up what like a fucking trash can off of the street and throw it at someone or yeah whatever. yeah because like in yakuza 6 from what i know because in yakuza the one you're playing right now it seems like when you get into a fight you have a certain area that you're fighting in 
in Yakuza 6, it's more like you fight in the open world. So, um, like, fights happen right there on the street as you're roaming around. That's that's what it's same in Yakuza 0. Okay. If you bump into someone too quick, they'll want to fight you but sometimes. Like, and... But, like, the main fights, how do they happen in Yakuza 0? I haven't done any main fights yet. Because oh. I only got an hour and a half in and then lost my progress. I did do karaoke, though, and it was very fun. You have to, like, press the buttons in rhythm to your guy singing. Just Yakuza 6 and all these Yakuza games, are they just look like games that I... That I missed out on playing, definitely. I'm like, oh, I would have had a lot of fun because I had fun with Saints Row and a bunch of those types of games. This seems like a really fun game, and so I'm excited to, that I'm being introduced to the franchise. Thank you, Matt, because it's like, oh, I'm gonna have fun while playing a game. Yay! Yeah, I got that. I, that rarely happens. I, I actually, I, I've always seen it. I thought it looked cool. Uh, and then uh, Octopimp, uh, I was talking to him recently, and he he told me I should, I should play Yakuza Zero if I want to play a Yakuza game. I should start with that one. So I did. So thank you, Alex, a.k.a. Octopimp. Very nice guy. But, like, let's talk about the real Yakuza. Those guys are fucking crazy. It's I don't the... know much about them other than that they're, like, they pretty much own the porn industry over there. They're, it's the biggest mafia in the world. It's the biggest, like, organized crime syndicate. syndicate. Yeah. And they, they run, syndicate. like, all the illegal shit. They run the porn industry. They run the drug industry. Is porn illegal? In Japan, no. But, well, there's there's a lot of restrictions, though, like, you know, you can't show the vagina. The JJ's got to be blurred out. Got to be pixelated. Buttholes. You can show buttholes. What? That's Peen- crazy. Little little little, little wiener's got to be censored too. Okay. So no. Why wiener. is that? And how come like sometimes? Okay, whatever. It's just like a thin strip of pic. Like it's almost like one pixel because a line down. That's their way of getting around. Like they have to censor it. But I why don't, don't think they just make a lot where it's like uncensored? Like what? Like it seems like the curve it's on a lot of stuff like that. It just seems like it's unnet. Like, no one's not masturbating to that. Yeah. In the same way that they would if it was uncensored. Yeah. I don't think, it's not like you're getting anything different. I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, I don't get to see, I don't get to see vagina in 4K. It's like, people are still getting, getting their rocks off. It's, it's just, they, I don't know what their porn laws are specifically, but it's, it's, that's weird, you know? Okay, this is also going to sound weird. I've noticed something too, where like, if something's posted on reddit or twitter and it's a cosplay girl a lot of regular cosplay girls they'll dress up yet scantily clad but then there are these i guess another type of cosplay girl where it's like you pretty much see everything except you don't like their suit is almost like those sensor bars that i was talking about where they pretty much show everything except it's lightly censored and it's like is that just a difference in culture between like American cosplaying and Japanese cosplaying and does that tie into like how their porn industry works because it's all censored like that? I don't know. Like I wonder how those things are connected in their culture versus Dude. like our culture because our culture is super sexualized and like we're open about it and like everything's uncensored, balls to the walls, girls shitting in each other's mouths like America. Dude, when I think of America, I think of girls shitting in each other's mouths. Dude, two girls, one cup, that's going to be on that's going to be on uh, America's permanent record for a long time. That that's always going to exist. You know, like, even in the year, like, 6,000 after everyone's been nuked and there's, like, two humans alive, they can look back and be like, that existed. That was part of human history. And it was big, too. And speaking of uh, poop, Matt. What? Uh, I'm just, I am gotta use the restroom. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait. We'll finish this conversation when you get back. Ryan is back, ladies and gentlemen. And Matt still won't play any online games with me. I've been asking for months. Ryan. And now I've cornered you in the podcast to answer. I don't play online games with anybody. Yeah. That's the... P- uh, yeah, you need to. It's not a personal thing. I just go home and I get depressed and don't do anything. Oh. That's pretty much it. I mean... And I'm bad at games, so I always feel bad playing them. That's essentially it. Could you ever think that you get depressed because you're not doing anything? Could have to do with that. That, yeah. that could probably be a big reason, well, I, right? I do things, but I... I mean, I do the same thing. There's a lot of times, like, most of the time I do not want to be talking with people. Like, I just want to be in my own bubble and exist Kind of just like be outside, walk around, be with Lego, listen to music, play games without talking to anybody, like being in my own bubble. And it's nice. But every now and then, it's nice to have a little social interaction, I'm sure. I'm sure that's healthy for the human brain. I get social interaction all the time. I love being social. I go out. I go out tons. I've been going on walks lately, too. In the evening, I'm going on walks every day. Love it, man. I love going on walks during the sunset pretty you know listen to some music get some tunes it's a good way to clear your head you know what what why are you staring at me because you're still not playing games with me online 
What do you What do you want from me, Ryan McGee? I want you to play games with me. What games? I don't know. You pick one. Um, I play all games. All games? Most games. Tamagotchi Party on for the Nintendo Wii? I'd play it. Okay. If it was multiplayer. It is multiplayer. Then we can play it. Let's play it on the channel, man. It's great. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Fun social interactions with my friend. Dude, Ryan McGee, if there's... You, you know what, dude? I'll play a game with you. Okay. Okay? You pick, though. Ryan, you ever thought maybe cornering me on the podcast is why I won't play games with you? <laughs> this is an intervention. Because I won't play video games? Because <laughs> you keep saying you will and then don't. Just tell me you don't want to. I do want to. I just got to be in the mood. And it has nothing to do with you. It's all me and just if I want to play a game, you know? You gotta. You I gotta don't play games for fun. Get Call of like Duty. Like most people. <gasps> what do you play them for? Work? No, I mean, like, when, when I go home, like, sometimes, like, I, I play games sometimes, you know? I'm not that big into games outside of what I do, though, I mm -hmm. guess. Besides, like, fuck Animal Crossing. You fuck with that? I fuck with that You hard. fuck with it? I fuck with it you hard, with bro. Tom, with, uh, with fucking uh, Tom Katamari Nook. Damacy? I fuck with that, too. You fuck with uh, Yakuza? I do, I do. Um, Dude, you fuck with Minecraft, too? I, 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 I hate to say it, but I do. You fuck with old school RuneScape? I do fuck with old See, school See, you do RuneScape. play games. Yeah, but how many of those are multiplayer? Uh, all I know is once RuneScape Mobile comes out on both I, like iOS and Android... You better be popping in that server. I'm gonna be popping in that server, man, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be one hell of a party. You know I'm gonna I'm create a little mobile character. I'm gonna be like GF, 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 and we're gonna find each other GFs. I gotta find you one. You gotta find. We gotta set each other up on blind Runescape dates. <laughs> How's that sound? That sounds good. That's how you meet women, dude. I wanna go back to the Yakuza though. How awesome they are! They're fucking crazy. Awesome? Crazy awesome, dude. <laughs> okay. They're really scary. I don't know much. Teach me. Teach me the ways of the Yakuza. Well, some of them dress real cool. Like, Do some of them dress real... <gasps> do they have pompadours? Some of them do have pompadours. <laughs> they they dress... like this day. My, my favorite way that... So there's like kind of two ways Yakuza people dress. Some of them just wear like suits. But then some of them wear like... Like a leopard print like... Like... I don't know how to describe it, but it's one of those like frilly kind of shirts and then like a, like a red sparkly suit on top. Like a lot of them dress very flamboyant and out there, and I, and I think that's that's pretty cool. I don't I do not condone any of their actions though because they kill people and they. I think it's very fascinating where a lot of them, you know, the whole the cut off your pinky thing. Because you can always see a little nub. They don't cut off the whole pinky. They just cut no, off the top. Just part. a nub. Well, it depends. Is it a nub each time? Depends on depends on the severity of things. I think. Ooh. But, they cut uh, it off with a with a katana. They gotta do it themselves too. With a katana? I don't know what you cut it off with, but put it in a little guillotine. And they, go. <laughs> they have a little finger guillotine, <laughs> just just for just for yakuza finger cutting. A dick guillotine. I saw Those some. Those exist. A dick guillotine? Yeah. I'm sure someone has rigged up a dick guillotine and cut their own dick it off. Sounds like something that would be in like a Seth Rogen movie. You gotta go to the dick guillotine. No, I don't want to go to the dick guillotine. <laughs> Sounds like Alex Jones. <laughs> well, it's 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 after he just smoked a bowl, so he's like. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> that's Seth Rogen. The dragon him and changed the Dick Guillotine. That, that's, we, that's just, the, we just wrote a Seth Rogen movie. That's the name of the movie. The Dick Guillotine, and then it's rated R for a Dick Guillotine for scenes including a Dick Guillotine. <laughs> Dude, I man, like, what do you what? What's Seth Rogen's next big hit gonna be? What was his last one? Sausage Party. The Disaster Artist doesn't count. No, does no, it? no. That was James, that was James Franco. Franco. But yeah, I guess Seth Rogen's last big outing was the great, wonderful, should be remembered forever Sausage Party. Maybe he'll make Sausage Party too. I really hope they don't. They probably will. What's going to come first, the Emoji Movie two or Sausage Party two? The Emoji Movie two. Is that already confirmed? It had. I don't know. I just that makes me sad thinking about it. We support. Like it. I'm legitimately upset. Thinking about Emoji Movie Two and the fact that we supported, supported Emoji we, Movie we Movie gave one. we gave our our hard earned money to that movie. I will say though, when the second one comes out, I will not see it. Like not even for a funny haha. I'm not gonna see it either. I I I had enough with the first one. I will continue to see Medea. Movies, I will see right? all the Medea movies. <laughs> I will continue supporting that. Even industry. though they're torture every time, and every time I'm like, I could have spent my time a lot better, and I actually do regret seeing it. I've there's said it before. Like there's I, something about them where I, it's just like there's no way they could get any worse, and they do get worse. I've enjoyed Medea movies in the past. Like I I've never enjoyed, enjoyed legitimately. Like enjoyed the, like there was one movie. that I saw that I actually like thought was good back in the day. The one where the, she pours hot grits. On I think so. Is that grits or mashed potatoes? It's grits. It's hot grits because they stick to you and burn your skin. So, 
Um, she was he was cheating on her. What's the next Medea movie? Uh, Boo Medea Halloween three. Do you think they're gonna do that? I'm gonna look it up see if they've. Man, already... if they, I mean, they make money. Why, why wouldn't they? They've right. Got her. Boo Medea Halloween. God damn it, Kanye. Sorry, his his goofy Twitter just came up. He's been, he's been, Wait, he's... I got an incoming call. Who's it from? Hello. Hi, Ryan. Yes. Hi, Ryan. This is Marcella calling you from Spectrum on a recorded line. How's it going today? It's going all right. Just chilling with some friends. Oh, that's nice. Um, so the reason for my call today, sir, I'll be real brief. For being one of our low internet, we would like to offer a free week of our new streaming services. There's no problem. I'm just not interested. Hi, I'm a spokesman for Mr. McGee. He's he's not interested. Hello? 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 Yeah, I, I represent Mr. McGee. Um, he's he's currently not interested in any internet deals. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. You too. That was easy. Yeah. See? Look how easy you that was. You got a telemarketer call and I, you know, I represented you legally and <laughs> she did she didn't try to fight that one at all. She didn't try to say are you sure? Because, you know, she just went, okay, have a nice day. I think what clued her off was when I answered the phone with, hey, like very excited. When you said hanging with some friends, what she didn't know was it was your attorney. Was <laughs> yeah. Your You're hanging with your attorney. I, love it. I, I like I like saying those things because they have to respond in a certain way. Usually just like, hey, oh, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. But if you if you jumble up their script and it's like, hey, I'm hanging with friends. Oh, like, that's nice. Yeah, they have to like, oh, that sounds fun. Anyways, just uh, um, just putting chapstick on my dad right now. <laughs> yeah, just saying shit like that. Just, just massaging my dad's knees. Oh, how's that's that's nice. I'm gonna start fuck fucking with you more. Is she gonna press the make my internet bad button? She might make your internet bad now. <laughs> that's a button they have on the desk. <laughs> make make Ryan McGee's internet bad. They all have one. <laughs> just in case they get me and I fuck with them like I'm like that. all right, he fucked with us. Hit the button. Everyone hit the button. I'm just hoping if I do this every now and then, like. My number's gonna be crossed off of their sheet at some point and be like, no, he just fucks with us every time. We're not getting a sale off of this man. I keep getting those IRS calls that are like, the IRS has opened a lawsuit into your taxes. And I'm like, no, they no, they haven't. Stop it. And he's like, um, uh, okay. I, 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 I puppy dog promise. Oh, if you puppy dog promise them, <laughs> shit, that's, Damn, that, that means business. That's a, that's a, that's a good one. Oh, I got him on the line. I love messing with telemarketers. I want to do it more. <laughs> I wish a telemarketer would call me right now so I could just can pick you, up Can you do say, a good kid's voice? Um, kid's voice? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Oh, by the way, I saw something on Reddit that was pretty funny. They're, they're, they legitimately have to tell people, it's like, please vaccinate your pets because the anti-vax thing apparently is moving to pets. I saw that. And they're like... Guys, pets don't get autism. Please just... Please vaccinate your pets. <laughs> and even if they did, they wouldn't get it from the, the vaccines. Now, do you have uh, evidence to back that up, Ryan, that you can't get va uh, autism from a vaccination? Look, you're going you to you're have to talk to vaccine expert Jim Carrey on that one. He's an anti-vaxxer, right? He was. I don't know if he still is. I think if he's not together <sighs> with that woman or whoever it was. <laughs> I know people. Like, in my personal life that are anti-vaxxers because of the autism thing. Because they think that the United States government is, is putting uh, chemicals to control people and give them autism in the vaccines. And I'm like, no, no. It's like, yeah, your kid's going to get, your kid is going to get polio. <laughs> and they will. Like, there are legitimate fears. The, the government has done some fucked up things. But I, th I don't see the benefit or the research like the beneficial research they'd get into giving their own citizens that could potentially work for them or like do stuff for them, just autism. Like it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. You know what I think it comes down to? I think it comes down to parents give their, their baby gets a vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, their little tiny baby. Yeah. Some time goes by and soon their child shows signs of autism um, as a young child. And I feel like what it is, is, uh, unfortunately that would make some parents upset and they want to blame it on something because it's not their fault their kid has autism what so they're they like it was the vaccines you know it's like no it's not the fucking vaccines you know like I forgot like measles or something or some disease is like making a comeback for the first time in like 50 years and it's only because of anti-vaxxers and it's like there's a reason those diseases don't exist anymore because of vaccines there's also a reason that autism is off the charts <laughs> it's off the charts <laughs> Autism. <laughs> Woo!
please vaccinate your kids, guys, and it's please get vaccinated yourself. The Crash Bandicoot game. Dude, speaking of Crash Bandicoot, have you recently tried on MeUndies? Ad incoming. Ryan, you've heard me talk about MeUndies, and you know how much I love them, dude. You love them so much. In fact, I think I love them too. No, wait. I know I love them too. Actually, Ryan, I'm wearing three pairs of MeUndies as we speak. Yeah, I'm wearing five pairs at once, and it's still comfortable, no matter how many pairs you buy or wear. Well, guess what, Ryan? Maybe tomorrow when I show up to work, I'll be wearing eight pairs. (sighs) You know what's also really cool? What, Ryan? The sustainably sourced, naturally soft fiber that starts with beechwood trees and, and ends with the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced. The result, you know, being downright dreamy underwear. It does feel very good around my waist and groin region. MeUndies adventurous prints and designs are all limited edition and new patterns are released every few weeks on a rolling basis. It's rolling around all all the time, baby. And there's a 100% satisfaction guarantee. MeUndies guarantees you will love these undies or your money back. Go to MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. Ryan, say it. That's MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. Please do it. It helps support the podcast, helps support your boys, and also you're gonna, you're gonna, they're they're honestly just very comfortable. They're very comfortable. They're very they feel very nice, and the patterns are cool. They're cool. I mean, I usually just wear those boring kind of monocolored underwear, but these like these these make make it seem like I have a personality. And you can get those at meundies.com slash super mega for twenty percent off and a one hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. Yeah, we we already said it. I know. I'm just they making know. sure they know, know, Ryan. They I know, know. I know. I'm just making sure they know. Don't push it, man. Don't push it. You should buy them though. Um. Yeah. What's up? You want to fight? No, I don't want to. Why would you think I want to fight? I don't know. You just gave off the impression that you wanted to fight. I'm just trying to say that, you know, if you look like you're good to fight, I'm going to ask you if you want to fight. Therefore, that I can defend myself if you're going to fight. or I'm not. I don't want to fight you. I was OK. Now, that well, why are now, you so defensive? I'm saying now I know that you don't want to fight. I'm defensive because I was preparing for you to fight me or something. I, was, well, I wasn't even looking at a little at sucker you. punch. I don't know. I wasn't like even in the middle, like in the middle of me asking or explaining myself, you're just going to throw a sucker punch in there. Start a fight. I'm just making sure that's not going to happen. Well, even if I did start a fight, I'd win. So it's okay. Not, it's not okay. Like yeah. Yeah. Deal. I have no doubt in that. That's why I don't want to get in a fight with you. You're Good. a big, towering titan of a man. You don't. I know you don't want to get in a fight with me because you know I'd win. I know. That's what I'm saying. You're saying it because you know I'd win. Exactly. Yep. I know. Dad, why do you have to do this at breakfast every morning? Because I love you, son. That conversation took place in a household that th- there definitely needs to be child protective services. Like, there needs called to be immediately. Some, yes. Like at first, it was like two go- friends having a goof, and then it just turned into like, "Dad, do you want to? F- are you gonna fight me? I, I, I'd win. I mean, I mean, I know that, Dad, but just, whew, you're really boiling my blood, son. Dad, please, I don't want to fight. I just want to eat my bacon. Now all I can think about is fighting you. Dad, <laughs> you got it stuck in my head. You subliminally put it in my head. Dude, I would love to kick my dad's ass. Yeah. I'd love to just grab him by his his tiny little neck and just th- fucking throw him out a window. The only stipulation that I would have to kicking my dad's ass is that the audience would be comfortable with me crying my eyes out the whole time. Because <laughs> <laughs> you feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> the fans love it, though. <laughs> <laughs> You, like imagine watching your dad drop to the floor. Oh my god, that's blood depressing. coming out of his nose, tears in his eyes. That's just sad. The little boy that he he raised and cradled in his arms as that a he baby. Could've, he could have dropped and snapped in an instant, but he didn't. He raised me like, he loves a, like, you, like you're his boy, like a real dad. You're his boy. Yeah. And 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 now here you are towering over him, just. This is what you raised me for, father. And then then I uh, I go up the McGee family chain. Of so, kicking ass. So that means that, as in like, you have a son and he kicks ass, or like, you go up the chain and kick. I kick his mom's ass. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go up the chain and kick. I his, love that his game. His mom, his 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 siblings. <laughs> oh. Someone please say bless you out there. Say it to your phone or your computer screen. Or not, because uh, you don't need God. Hmm. Who said it was God that's blessing me? Uh, obviously, blessing is a religious phrase that people use uh, not in terms always. of Christianity. Not when they always. pray and you sneeze, you, you're sneezing out the devil. It's, you got to say bless you because you're sneezing out your sin, Matt. It's not just a Christian what thing. What do you think they did at Jonestown? Any, any religion can bless. Uh, no, only Christians can bless. That's not true. Only Christians can truly bless. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But any religion can bless. Of course. Like, bless, bless my fucking dumbass son. Oh, he's Jesus now. Is that what God said? That's not what happened. Jesus was born Jesus. He wasn't made into Jesus. Well, he was made. I mean, God... Celestial came in... No. (laughs) Let's not get into it. It, It's a a bunch of science that I don't want to explain. 
the audience isn't smart enough. They would they just wouldn't get it. <laughs> Go right over their stupid heads. It's I'm a, a joke, by the way. Most of you are probably smarter than I am. And then you're wondering, how did he get to where he is? And it's all luck. Ha 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 Dude, I can't, I can't imagine dropping my dad to the floor without doing like it twice. Are you accidentally dropping him? Or like, no, like punching my dad in the face. Do you think you could do it? I think your dad would win in a fight against you. Oh, my dad would kick my ass. He, he's like a fucking black belt in Taekwondo. Aikido. <laughs> Wait, close enough. He is, but he would, my dad would kick my ass, dude. My dad would, my dad would grab me by my throat. Spin me around like a like an Italian man spinning a pizza. Just crust. grab him by the balls and squeeze. I don't want to grab my dad's balls. That's the only way you're winning in a fight. He'll go, son, you came from here. And I would take them away from him <laughs> and rip them off. And then you'd, then you'd go make more Matt Watsons. You'd make an army of Matt Watsons. With my dad's balls? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if my dad can still even make kids. You, really? Well, I don't know. Did he cut his tube? I That's not what happens. I don't know. But no, yes, it is. He's they cut it. They I don't know, he's, it. he's sixty. Can you still have kid? Yes, Donald Trump had a kid when he was sixty. So Baron, he, my boy, if you Baron. watch Super Mega, if you're a fan of Super Mega, bring us to the Oval Office. So Baron, we can please meet, get us invited, so we can meet the greatest man alive. Baron, uh, please, I really want to come to the White House. Please get your get your poppy. To can we do us. a Let's Play with with the Donald? I do it. I'd 100% do it. Oh, if Donald Trump wanted to come on Super What Mega? game would we play with Donald Trump if he wanted to be on an episode of Super Mega? Um, we wouldn't let him choose the game. We'd no. have to choose a really good game. No, but he'd probably make it. It's like if he doesn't get to pick the game, he's going to throw tantrum and we'll yeah, be yeah, on. Yeah, 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 I, mean, I think maybe Donald Trump, we'd, we'd play like Mario Party and let him win. You know? Probably watch him play Solitaire. <laughs> or no, Spider Solitaire is probably more his league. <laughs> Hey, I played Spider Solitaire. Ain't no shame in it. Dude, I used to play Solitaire. When I was younger, Solitaire's fun. Did you play Spider Solitaire? What's, what's Spider Solitaire? It's just easier, I think. I think oh, is that all a, it is? I think it's just an easier version. Solitaire. I used to play Solit Solitaire on my iPod Nano. Did, did you ever beat it on the computer where it went... I had an uncle who loved playing it on his... On his doo -doo -doo. PC. Dell. Boom. AIM. AOL. Nice, dude. I DSL. Feel, I feel like everyone has a has an uncle that just like loved his old little PC and would go on like Second Life or like date or like take awkward selfies and put them on on MySpace. Remember when PC used to mean personal computer? What have the libtards done now? <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean now? Oh, politically correct. Yeah, there you go. It's the death of comedy, Ryan. It's the death of comedy, dude. Dude, it's not like comedy continuously changes and forms. Otherwise, it would be stuck in a rut, and not, and like it, comedy would pretty much not exist if it. That's didn't the thing. Keep comedy going. evolves. Like, do, you, do like okay? Would you like if you sat down right now and watched like a vaudeville show? Do you think you'd laugh once? No. Well, like a lot of like Jim Carrey's slapstick shit isn't of the big stuff anymore. Like, like I don't I don't think people like. Of course, like we appreciate it, but I feel like kids would watch that today and be like, "What the fuck is this?" They want stuff where where people are are shitting all over like like uh they want what is it for some reason I just picture kids laughing at the elephant scene in uh what's it called the dictator no that's not what the movie was the my uh, the brothers the brothers Grimsby something whatever it is brothers Grimm where would, where one animal fucks another animal and well, they hide inside, inside of an it, elephant's yeah. vagina and then it fucks it okay that I don't think that was ever funny but. That was not. That was one of the most unfunny scenes I've. In fact, I, I was just sitting there like, really? I was like, okay, this is the scene in the movie. This is the big scene. This is the big scene that they want to be known for. But yeah, anyways, like comedy continuously progresses, right? Yeah, of course. And without that progression, comedy would be stuck in a rut, which is not a good thing. Because like, you always need to, like, let's let's take like, imagine if this superhero hero fad lasted. Like, cause it's gonna fizzle out. Eventually, people are going to get tired of it. That's just how things work. And you gotta create better materials. You gotta create better content. Yeah. Um, and regardless of whether that change is brought about in uh being more sensitive or or f f uh, it's just not hitting the nerve anymore. I mean, change is important for something to progress and evolve in a in a in a good way. And but one thing I will say is like, I mean, I get where. Whoever, like people who say that quote, I get where they're 
coming from in a sense because it's like oh my my offensive humor isn't funny anymore it's like yeah just like how certain things just aren't funny anymore it's just how things evolve unfortunately you know i used to laugh at that stuff but now it's kind of gotten to the point where it's like old and it's done it's overdone like pe- like the times are changing times times are changing and times honestly like the, the i think shock humor for the most part in that sense like to that level has gotten old cuz cuz people with the internet jokes are just told just a thousand times a minute when it becomes popular so it things become old fast and with that certain styles of comedy i think become old pretty fast Ryan i could not have said that any better myself that was that was very elegant and also, I, I feel like the superhero thing... Not to might, say we're funny, but... Well, yeah, but but the superhero thing, I feel like it's kind of starting to boil to a... Uh, it's getting there, because if you... They, they keep taking up to the next level, like, Infinity War, crossovers, like... Comes tons out of, tomorrow! Tons of people in tons well, of people in one movie. It's like, they're like, now they're really starting to, like, pack it all in. So yeah. I feel like it's it's on its way out. It's They're definitely making more, and they plan to make more, but... You know, as much as big action movies like Rambo and stuff were a thing of its time and Westerns were popular at one time, you know, now we're in the time of superhero movies. And I'm and I'm really excited for this chapter to close and to see what we can come up with, because we're also getting a good um, a good influx of films from the studio in particular, A24, a lot of good independent films that are actually getting more attention than they would have before yeah which is nice to see yeah for sure um but I, i'm interested to see what the next mainstream thing will be you're gonna once you figure that out you're gonna be like oh man i miss superhero movies this sucks <laughs> probably it's probably gonna be a lot worse it's just gonna get more obnoxious it's and gonna stupid. be disney it's gonna be you we'll know. see. I mean, Disney keeps trying to pull off that live action like remake bullshit, but they always are bad. I know some of them remakes were a big thing for a while. Yeah, um, they're still a pretty big. Yeah, thing. You still gotta, pretty I big mean, thing. Disney's on that on that train. Are we gonna get a train of unnecessary sequels? We've already had that. Like maybe maybe a second wave of that. I think that's always gonna happen. I think that's always gonna be an underlying problem. Remakes children's and books. sequels. That was a thing for a while. Remember children's books. Was Winnie the Pooh's thing. coming out. So is Ferdinand with John Cena. Has it not come out already? I thought if it, it has. I have no idea. I didn't. I saw that trailer months ago. It had to have come out. I don't keep up with, with my my John Cena Ferdinand news. But I mean something that's like, yeah, like those are like little, um, I think those are little tiny genres that will always be a thing in cinema. But I'm talking about big culturally like bombastic genres like the superhero movie like you see all these crowds and all these people are so pumped about it yeah and then they release so many a year and then you have like other studios that are trying to do it and failing um yeah i just wonder what genre is gonna take it up next because because superhero movies aren't a new genre they've been happening they've just been done usually pretty poorly in the past um i'm in terms of those types, in terms of like the goofy, you know, dun, 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 save the day. Now, for some reason, they've they've found a way to make them click with the general public and for them not to be just bad B-movie bullshit. How about Let's Plays on the big screen? That's the next trend. Let's uh, Plays in movie theaters. No, that's that's just depressing. Ryan, that's not depressing. That's it's very sad. Imagine a theater full I mean, of people watching. Fathom events. I, I wouldn't be surprised if people like did Twitch Fathom event shit. Oh, totally. No, people are already doing it. Like Ninja, he did a show in Vegas recently where basically he played Fortnite for like five hours on stage. And God. people people go and uh, they could play on stage with him. That's cool. Yeah. Guess. Hey, if you, people are into it, I just, I just, having fun, go for it. I, we're at this place right now, and I don't know if it's because I'm too stuck in the past because I miss it so much. Pussy. But I, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, um... I just don't see things falling into place where I can easily get them. Like I, you know, I understand that. Yeah. He played in this arena, but I'm trying to wrap my head around it. And it's like, he just played in an arena and played a video game and people were cheering. It's like in my head, usually I only see like musical artists or, um, people with hey, a different kind of talent. Cause like, being like, good at a video game is a, is, is a talent. Like hey, it is. A, you, you, you simply just said it time, you know, times change and like, like comedy entertainment changes too. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's just, I'm just saying it's a, uh, from my perspective, it's just hard to wrap my brain around that, even though like still, it's hard for me to wrap my brain around, uh, why people watch let's plays, but like I, I have, I have fun doing it and people seem to watch it. So it's like, that's cool. That's a cool thing that happened. You know, uh, it's that whole thing, um, instance that you and I 
would discuss about our parents always you know, just kind of being like, you're not going to be making money playing video games. And the only thing that if you were young and wanted to have a fun job would be like, I'm going to be a video game tester. Do you know how hard those jobs are to come by? It's like, ah, whatever, I'm going to try and I get to play video games for a living. But now like it's upped to where it's like, you're not just testing games. You're just playing games you love for a living. Yeah. And also like Twitch is a new thing. Like I watch me it. live playing uh, games. I love doing Twitch. And you do, and I can't wait for you to start start up your streams, boyo. Might have already done it by the time this podcast comes out. Ooh, really? Are you streaming uh, tonight? Maybe. Are you? Depends on my plans. Uh-oh. I might do something today, but I might also stream. Oh. I feel it getting closer, dude. I've been putting it off forever. I feel it getting closer. I feel it just... Yeah? I could, I could feel it breathing in, on my neck. It's like, ooh. You I just you just gotta you just gotta press that start stream button. It's already then, then set up. I just gotta fucking do it. Just gotta, no, I gotta make my panels. That's that's the only other thing. Your I panels gotta do. for my like panels. The, donate and shit. Just do what I did until like you come up with a with actual fucking graphics. Just just draw them out in Photoshop. Yeah, I'll just, do that. Just, fuck hand, it. just hand I'll draw them. It. Tip. <laughs> just do text or whatever. Just the important thing is you just start streaming and building up a backlog. That's what I gotta do, man. Hey, <clears throat> speaking of backlog, we got. Now, 90 episodes of this podcast. There's yeah. something in there for everyone. Go go check out some other ones. Just click around to random ones. Uh, but that's all we got for this week, guys. We'll be back next week with episode 91. Um, thanks again. Check out uh, meundies.com slash supermega. And check us out on iTunes. And if you have not, uh, turn on that. Hit that little bell button to turn on notifications. Because bell sometimes super nice. YouTube does not. Even if you're subscribed, they won't let you know. You won't pop up in your sub feed. So, uh Please, guys, please hit that bell button. Please subscribe if you haven't. Share uh, share us with your friends, your family, your grandma, whoever you want. Um, and thank you so much for listening. We'll be back same time next week, guys. Bye. Bye.